Mr. Mansoor. I don't know why I just went Betty Davis on you, but, but there's your welcome. That's one hell of a greeting, right? How you doing? I'm doing okay, Brian. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. It's about time because you do a lot in this city. I guess I refer to myself as a theater director and an okay. educator. All right. Yeah. So you teach. I'm a teacher. You are so full of art that you <laughs> must impart your knowledge onto others. Or that I'm so desperate to learn. <laughs> I get to work with this awesome group called Dreams of Hope. Yes. Uh, they're a LGBTQIA plus teen group here in Pittsburgh, and we make an original play every year. Wow. That's my primary work with the group. But in addition to that kind of teaching, I used to work at the Warhol Museum. Okay. Pretty and cool place to work day in and day out, I imagine. I mean, the most incredible environment. The balloon right? room. Like, I would try to lobby to make that my office, <laughs> if possible. It'd be a little distracting, but I think... Oh, no. I'm, kind of, I'm excited about exploring art with folks as well. So mm -hmm. and that kind, of, so that's started with teaching, was thinking about, you know, I was trained as a theater person and was all of a sudden working in a museum and learned the way your brain can explode when you're staring at a painting. Yeah. Um, and it has fueled my theater practice. Like, I think... Hatch is kind of very much situated on a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary practice. And how does this wonderful youth art behind us inform you this thought, space? I thought you did this. this well, on a good day, I maybe <laughs> could get there. Isn't that yeah. awesome? Well, yeah, so we are, our backdrop here is at Winchester Thurston School, where you are uh, rehearsing now. Hatch Arts Collective, uh, which is, you are a founding member of this. So what, what is an arts collective, actually. There, there's three of you, yes. and you seem to get along pretty well, which I think is kind of a rarity for three artists. So the, so it's Paul Cruz, Nicole mm -hmm. Shiro, and myself, and we gathered as a trio in 2012? Long time ago, but not that long ago. Paul and I went to undergrad together. Okay. Um, that was a long time ago, and it feels like it. So we went to undergrad together for, in Chicago, outside of Chicago. Um, and we never had the opportunity to make work there together. But we, I think, knew that we were curious. He's a playwright and I'm a director. Uh -huh. We were kind of curious what that would be like. So we moved to Pittsburgh to find out. Um, and we started working on a play. Our goal was to get one play on its feet. And we knew we could not do it alone, the mm. two of us. So we asked Nicole Shiro, this incredible producer and operations person in town. Um, and we had no intention of ever becoming a group or an organization. That was never the goal. The goal was to get four chickens on its feet. <laughs> um, chickens in the yard. Exactly. Yes, that was produced here in, in Pittsburgh last year. Yeah, two Am times now. Wait, do you remember? I auditioned for that. Do you chickens remember? The yes, yes. I was in a room with the three of you, and I auditioned for that, and Carla Booz was there. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So I, I have read the script. Uh, and I think uh, folks from Berg Vivant saw it and reviewed it. You don't remember this, do you? I should. I, I, I am. You totally am caught me red-handed. I am so disappointed <laughs> that, that I made such a lousy impression. But you know what? I, I didn't have a lot of experience being a chicken. I think that may, may be it. So, you've got Driftless happening. Yeah. Is this is, is, the Drifters? Driftless? Is there a? There's very much a relationship. Okay. In that, so the Drift invites us to do a project, and they said, "Hey, you've got a raft." and a river, and what do you want to do? <laughs> and we had been in conversation about a lot of different things, but uh, it was the perfect storm and the perfect moment. And we did a 30 minute performance underneath the 31st Street Bridge uh -huh. um, in 2013 now, like right after chickens had closed. Um, up, and that was our first kind of stab at this conversation around fracking. Okay, so what was that production, actually? It was called Driftless. Okay. We left the name the same. And it was in response to Paul's younger brother, one of his younger brothers, is an environmental activist in Minnesota. Uh -huh. And he had just chained himself, uh, not chained himself, they had, they had prevented sand trucks from being able to do their work in Minnesota. So the fracking process in Pittsburgh, one of the main ingredients in the process is sand. Many people might not know that. And the sand comes from Minnesota. The majority okay. of it, the best place, one of the best places to get the sand that we need to be able to do it is Minnesota. And so Paul's brother's out there doing activism work against the sand, the frack sand mining. Okay, where they are getting the sand to frack in Pennsylvania. Yes. I follow. A little bit, yeah. Well, fracking alone, I mean, I, I don't understand a lot about it, but I, I don't understand how it's legal. Okay. Now, and this is not a political statement. This is just my <laughs> wrapping my head around it because I, it's been explained to me 
how it works. And it sounds, to fracking to me, sounds like a diabolical plot of a James Bond villain. <laughs> That like we will bore into the earth and crack it open and extract the gas. It just, doesn't it sound like something that like Ernst Stavros Blofeld would be <laughs> like doing in the Swiss Alps and Bond would have to stop? I mean, it just is like nefarious. And so it's... Paul understood it as a love story. Oh, okay. Right? Well, I think they're both. I think all of the understandings of it. I think thinking about it poetically is actually quite helpful. Thinking about it as a movie or thinking about it as a James Bond moment. Well, okay, I'm like, glad what? we're in agreement here, yeah. yeah. I think there's something really powerful about it. And that's one of the images Paul creates in, the, in this play, and it started three years ago right away. The sand comes from Minnesota and is injected into our land here in Pennsylvania. Okay, they just throw sand underground, all right. And it changes everything. You know, the same way someone's love might, right? That this person comes from somewhere else and is a part of my being all of a sudden, and I'm totally different and new. Is it always good? No. I can see Valentine's. You inject sand into my heart <laughs> and expel gas <laughs> from me, which That's... you then collect for a profit, <laughs> right? I I'm feeling the love, yeah. That'll be the try first- to Try that at a bar and see how you do as a pickup line. Yeah. I, mean, I, I could, I could do worse, I have done worse. <laughs> That, and that's how you're telling this story, which gives it a whole other depth than something that's, you know, I guess, preachy. You know, like, fracking is bad, or fracking is good, you know? Um, or like some film strip that you would be shown in school. It's, it's a lot deeper than that. Yeah, it's being... Um, the play is almost being, like, carried by two saints, by St. Peter and St. Barbara. So preachy is an interesting word, because in certain ways, uh, yeah. <laughs> we do have our two Catholic saints. Uh, is this, is, is this Barbara here? That is St. Barbara. On your, on your poster, yeah. postcard? Patroness of minors and explosions. Isn't she awesome? Really? There, there is a patron saint of minors and explosions. Now, those are two things you probably don't want, like, together. And unfortunately, are together. And one saint governs them both. You've got a great cast here. You've got Ken Bolden, Tammy Sai. Siobhan Christensen, these are all like my favorite people. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, how on earth did you get all these folks together? This is amazing. Right? This is an amazing cast yeah, here. Yeah, and Alex Silverbutt and Trevor Butler, like I mean, all five of them are really just incredibly talented, perfect for their roles, really, really dynamic, make the most interesting decisions. And on top of it, they're all really nice. Like, and yeah. folks need to get down to see this at the New Hazlet. You're only running four days, right? 11th through 14th yep. of August. So, shaking things up, is that a bad term for when you're talking about fracking? I think it's actually totally appropriate. Yeah, yeah. okay. That is exactly what we're doing, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I've seen things, you know, that have sold at auction for like $600,000 that I wouldn't pay a dime for at a <laughs> flea market. But uh, here I am talking about it, right? So that's, that's something. You know, I have said for years they should bring riverboat gambling to Pittsburgh. I can't believe this hasn't been done. I think you need to pitch the drift. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't know if they could. I mean, maybe they get away with like bingo on a raft. I feel like Pittsburgh. That would ready. be great, though. <laughs> bingo on a raft. That's. I would go to that. Yeah, I, I don't need to know anything else. If it's for a good cause, great. I don't. I'm, I'm for it. Just put me on a raft and give me my dauber. Come see the play. You'll get to you'll get to see an IKEA table go from box to table. Well, if it's anything like it is when I do it, that'll it's got to be a three-hour play. 